Hello and welcome everybody to our UDK Tuesday number 228 with BUST. I will leave the word to Professor Sobekano who invited today's guest. Thank you very much, Charlotte, uh, for uh, remi reminding us uh, how many already uh, UDK Tuesdays we have. <laughs> But the, every Udega Tuesday is a special occasion, and I'm really happy, and it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you today the uh, office BAST, a team from architects from Toulouse in, in France, who is uh, represented today by uh, Louis Leger, who is uh, one of the members of this group, which is a, really a collective group, which is a, a, a cooperative as they define themselves, which means that this is already stating a question about um, the way approaching architecture, which is very interesting uh, to me and to us. Uh, uh, and is one of the reasons we already uh, decided to invite Bast. I mean, I have to say that personally, I, I became uh, acquainted and interested about the work of Bast, probably like many others, when they won this really prestigious award for the Miss van der Rohe uh, Emerging Architects um, uh, Prize or Awards. Obviously, this is not any award. It's a very special one that immediately uh, takes attention about the way, in this case, um, a young office uh, and young studio uh, approaches architecture from the point of view of, uh, of reality. That's, a, my point of view, a key question in the world of past, uh, but also definitely and connected to the ideas that are behind or at this point in, or in the process of defining architecture. Um, you know probably that in, in several of our last invitations, I would say in most of them, we are particularly interested in younger offices. I don't mean only the word as a generation, but also in the sense that um, how do they react in a way or they reinvent their own way of working in architecture in a way like we always did when we were at the same age. But I have the feeling there is a difference nowadays in many European practices yeah, I, that I can remember and some of them have been with us in France, in Spain, in the UK, in the northern countries, in Germany, in which uh, this collective approach is a sort of a common ground in many cases. There are other common interests that are very much related in my point of view to the value of construction, which is not only about an abstract relation to architecture. I, I tend to understand them as a sort of a balance which seems to be so interesting between pragmatism or even a technical construction pragmatism and, and a poetic approach. I mean, and this sort of balance in a way defines, in my point of view, uh, many of these, uh, or several, not many, some of these uh, uh, approaches like the one of, of past as far, as far as I know it, which is uh, only briefly, and that's one of the reasons we really invite you today, because it's important for the students to understand how you transmit and you approach your ideas and, and how in that sense i have the feeling that there were previous uh, times in which young architects as far as they could or we could uh, start uh, working uh, in, in the different moments we always had somehow models or references to somehow follow Nowadays, in times of crisis, which is not a short one because it's already a way of trans transforming society in a way, I really uh, would like to think and, and that in many of these cases, or in the case of BAS, uh, 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 this is also eventually showing us uh, uh, ways of understanding the new future as architects. And in that sense, I feel really, I'm per particularly very interested in the, what we, we are going to see here today. And I'm looking, really looking forward to, to, to listen to your work. I simply would like to thank you all as a team, even though you decided that one is going to do the presentation. Uh, Louis explained us just before that he would like to show, first of all, a video. He will explain it. Uh, that means that probably our presentation today, today will be less of a lecture and more of a discussion. And this depends very much on all of you who are listening to, to the presentation today. I really hope that it's going to be like that. And it will help us to, un to understand the, the, the ideas, the work of, of BAST, which by the way, as you probably know, it's, it's an acronym uh, for this uh, Bureau Architecture Saint Titre, which is already, I don't know if it has a, a, a 
an intriguing meaning behind, but obviously relates to this idea of no title, and title records also the, the work of the conceptual and land art artists of so many years. And maybe you are interested in explaining also where it comes from. So, uh, Louis, thank you very much. Uh, and we look forward to your presentation. Okay. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, so, we'd like to thank, of course, all the UDK Tuesday team uh, that make it, makes it happen. Uh, it's a really good opportunity for us to lectures in general are really good opportunities to to step back from our daily work and and just to have a look at what we do and and find ways to 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 show what we do uh, what is quite important about our work is is um is that we face every opportunity to to to, to make projects let's say so this conference this lecture is called c18 uh, the reason is that it's 18 so 19 sorry is that it's the 19th conference we've done uh, it takes place in in all the names of projects we're running every project is named after um, a letter and a number so this conference has been taken as a project itself um, for this conference we decided to 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 do a video uh, a video because we're being invited to to, the, to do these long distance uh, lectures was the opportunity for us to, to explore a new way of showing our work um, by showing rushes like caption of videos, by moving pictures, because it, it talks a lot about um, constrictions and that's interest us a lot. So Charlotte, if you can just play the video, maybe it all, it's all explained in there so we can launch it and, and have a talk after that. Don't hesitate to ask questions. We, 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 we've made on purpose something quite short to be able to talk about it as we think that lectures is, is the good, a really good opportunity to, to discuss things more than just showing what we do. Thank you. Thank you. And may I just remind everybody to turn the microphone off while we're showing the video, please. BUST was founded in 2013 in Toulouse. Commissions first arrived through friends and neighbors. It started with rehabilitation projects, pushing us to think our approach through precise interventions related to existing situations. To rational issues, BUST tries to find rational answers. BUST is not a group of old friends. It's not ideologically uniform. BUST is trying to build a collective statement that the studio is not a group of individuals. Construction appeared to be the common language shared by all of us. And every project is taken as an opportunity to develop new ways of building. Limited budget brought BAST to look for efficient answers. Efficient answers brought BAST to show things as they are built. When two ideas are fighting, the obvious one is picked. We recognize its efficiency. Sometimes it becomes a project. In which details and execution matters are reduced to a minimum using a single material that constitutes everything. At best, a good idea is not laborious. An intervention must achieve more than its own purpose. Bast always tries to hit many targets with one nail. Most of our project's decisions are taken on site. Once the construction is started, that's where the project is embodied, where adaptation have to be made. Today, we are not showing you finished projects, as it doesn't say much about the way we do architecture. This lecture is about construction processes, illustrated by videos captured on site and organized into five recurrent topics from our daily work, purge, structure, floor, glazing, system.
it often starts with demolition, by stripping everything to the bone, by revealing what was there, by discovering how things are built. And building is as important as any other step in our construction process. Working on existing buildings is a constraint that BAST try to turn to its advantage. We like to call them opportunities as they define a frame of possibilities that the project has to reveal. Existing features are understood as opportunities to give them new purposes. A window becomes a door by pulling down the window sill. A beam from a pulled down woodwork is used as a lintel. A former chimney becomes a light, an air well. There are no small intentions. This step is also about taking off the layers that covers the essential. We developed a financial logic of putting more money into fine demolition finishes than into fine finishes. The first being always cheaper than the second. Along with the craftsmen we are working with, we found methods to leave things as they are after demolition. Taking off an old moist render is easier by kicking with a standard hammer than with special purpose machines. It doesn't damage the brick either. Sandblasting existing old bricks is necessary to take off all the falling bits and dust. But it still needs sealant. Sandblasting wood is more efficient than sanding it with paper, especially when you have to treat the whole timber work. And the result is more satisfying too. We like to say that the first step is to build a ruin, keeping what would stay if the building was abandoned, what make it stands. Floor is a subject that we could argue with clients forever. We try to find ways not to spend too much time choosing something. Concrete is a good solution to solve many issues. It can be structural, it's flat, it accepts networks running inside it, and above all, it's cheap. Standard concrete can be a little rough when you simply pour it. The action of grinding and polishing transform it into a smooth surface. It also reveals what it contains, and according to the place it's done, aggregates and cement are always different. The heterogeneity of its revealed composition is also a good way to make all the imperfection inherent to such a floor disappear.
cracks and bubbles become almost invisible. We like the efficiency of transforming something rough and cheap into a convenient floor. In other cases, we look for materials coming from industrial processes, having the advantage of being cheap and again, fitting all convenient criteria. We recently discovered a double film phase plywood used for truck interior fitting. One face is roughened, not to be slippery, the other is smooth and resistant to moist and scratches. The advantage is in the fact that it comes already treated. No need to varnish or sand. The only action that has to be done is to cut it and fix it. Efficient. The project for our offices was the opportunity to try something that clients would never accept. The constraint there was not to lose an inch of eight, 2.2 meters under the beams. The floor was already made of gravel. We simply laid four centimeter layer of tarmac, strong enough to accommodate a workshop and cheap enough to fit in our tight budget. Again. A construction site is not an easy thing to manage. When we start a project, we always try to have few contractors building the project. It helps mastering the result by reducing interactions between workers. Our projects intend to maximize the tasks given to each of the contractors and are developed according to their skills. It's a way to optimize their interventions and presence on site. As structure is necessary in every construction, the mason or the carpenter often get the main roles. We put them in charge of things they are not used to, asking them to take care of the finishes as they will be left as such. It's always more challenging for a worker to tell him his work will be seen. It also constitutes a good method to get the best of him and to valorize his achievement. Materials used for structure are, in essence, made to last. We prefer to put more money in a well-realized cement block wall and leave it as such rather than hiding it behind plasterboards. Avoiding interior fittings is a way to fit into a tight budget. Prefabrication is another way to achieve efficiency. We like to work with carpenter able to prefabricate framework structure. Assemblage details are simplified, systematized. Transport constraint 
pushes us to think rationally. It gives dimension and logic to the project. And a carpenter works much better in his workshop than on site. Glass, of course. Outside, inside, on the roof, in excess, always legitimate. When there is no money, it's all spent on glazing. If you don't see it on the con, it's not there yet. Choosing a single action would be glass. Glass itself is not expensive compared to its efficiency. It often is the frame and its brain that makes the price. A piece of glass fulfills many constraints. It insulates, retaining transparency. It allows passive solar gain when well exposed in winter. It's waterproof and lasts forever. The way it's fabricated and transported also gives interesting constraints. Its dimension and composition rationalize construction processes. It gives measurements to projects. We've been working for a few years with a glazer, with whom we've developed our knowledge about this material finding out, along with him, different ways to give purpose to each project. Trying different ways to fix glass directly to many types of structures. Exploring the world of glues and the way it fits with all kinds of materials. In a project where glass was not appropriate, we tried transparent polycarbonate compact. Its plasticity allows to drill, screw and sew it. A glass you can work with like wood. The glazier improved his carpentry skills for that time. When a part of refurbished roof has to be glazed to accommodate a winter garden, we made the carpenter cover a third of the roof with glazed tiles. The carpenter became that time the glazier. Two recent projects brought us to consider the extension of an existing construction as thermal insulation. The opportunity to create more surface 
was taken to create another glazed layer facade. The space in between increases the insulation capacity of the glass, creating a thermal buffer zone. Thermal control through new spaces. One nail, its two targets. Our quest of efficiency brought us to think about devices that allows as much reversibility of use as possible. Reversibility can be achieved through many ways. The kinetic one always fascinated us. The fact that something can be there and a minute after be away fulfills the efficiency that our projects are seeking. It allows the cohabitation in the same place of opposite physical state only by pushing a button. Outside, inside. Cold, warm. Seen, hidden. Open, closed. Enlightened, dark. When an old couple asked us to accommodate more space in their aristocratic mansion to host their grandchildren, we answered by rehabilitating the unused attic space. Their children only visit them during summer. We wanted the access to be hidden when not used and the intervention as furtive as possible. Leave the mansion untouched. The stairs to access the attic space goes up and down with a mechanized winch. The plot for an extension in the center of Toulouse was too small to accommodate the extension and in exterior space. The glazed roof was conceived as a motorized horizontal sliding door that can be opened. When the weather allows it, half of the room become an outdoor space. Industrial devices are, in essence, efficient. Often designed to answer specific issues. Several times, they appear to be a good answer to our project's issues too. Our practice is about being concrete. Go straight to the point. Our daily job is about constructing buildings. No need to be smart to understand what we do. There are no hidden meanings. It's all there and visible. Thank you for your attention. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Louis, for your presentation. Yeah. I don't know if you want to add something before, or we are going to go directly to the point, as I see you try to explain in your presentation, that I found extremely going uh, to the not not uh, not showing any unnecessary uh, in in a way. This uh, was maybe the underlying part of your lecture. I only want to mention what uh, to me became also particularly um, challenging or catch me, uh, catch my attention. Yeah, I mean, this idea that you started by presenting your own work as a series of elements, I 
I think you even mentioned the word element, and, 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 and particularly uh, focusing on, on construction as it clearly became obvious and in the process, etc. You divided the, the presentation in, and this is already a, a way of presenting yourself, in a series of elements in which, let's say that three of them, I would understand like, you know, corresponding to what one would ex uh, expect. Yeah, I mean, floor, structure, glass, which could be a, 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 ex a strict interpretation of the vertical enclosure of the building. I was asking myself, the roof was not there. If we think in the famous four elements of architecture and so on, roof was not mentioned, which is a question I only to start with the students and maybe some others will ask you other question. And to me, obviously, the more um, unexpected one uh, were demolition and system, because demolition and system are not really, in a way, elements. I mean, demolition is an action that you define with a very poetic, I like, maybe you hate the word, but um, in this very, you know, rational approach that you uh, present, it's a, a poetic interpretation you say that you start building a ruin yeah which is a way of uh, also a contradictory statement in a way ruin is about time and this is in sort of immediate so a question is about that and the other one is about system that maybe others would call flexibility and you relate to transformation of reversibility etc etc so maybe it's simply to start i mean this idea of building a ruin uh, uh, to uh, to me is extremely interesting because in this decision of what do you keep and what do you delete there is always a limit in which you delete too much and then the meaning of everything is lost then it doesn't matter that you are refurbishing an existing building because you eliminate too much or do you limit you eliminate too too less, and in that sense, um, there is something also in between. To me, this is an interesting question, and maybe um, simply to 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 help the students to start with many more interesting questions, you can answer. Okay, so yeah, of course, the the fact that um, our everyday job is started with rehabilitation projects is just brought us to deal with this question of existing buildings and and then um, the idea that we developed was like to face this existing situation and to find uh, um, what what was good to keep as you said um, but most of the, the situation we're facing uh, are just telling us that most of it uh, is kind of useless let's say um, of course, we, we in each time we, we face a project, we consider what could be kept to make sense according to the to the issues of the project. Um, but then, often the answer comes back to keep the structure, uh, keep what makes sense the building, and and deal with it. And then all the interventions like um, modifi modification of the structures uh, are creating a discussion with the project. Most of the time is like that. Uh, so um, keeping a ring is to say like uh, it's a way to 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 say like keeping the structure and and for us even in in, in what we developed after uh, is is about using the structure as the base as the as the white page you know and, and taking off what is let's say unnecessary. Uh, and what has, has been put in through time and through 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 all the, the intervention of people living in the places we are working on. You know, simply, simply simply to pass the word to to the to the questions. When you mentioned this, I, another question that was or an issue that to me was also uh, especially interesting to, to to listen you were talking about, about materiality and you're talking about structure and then you show how you cut a, a beam or whatever and but at some point the material is, seems to be not so important as the action that you do on it you mentioned for example concrete is fine it helps it solves many things but the polishing of concrete this is an action it's not anymore the concrete itself 
<laughs> transform it into something different. Yeah. yeah. Do you think this is something that is behind your thought behind in, and your attitude, or, or simply? Yeah, of course, of course. We 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 really we really like like to value the action, the the, the let's say the construction process of modifying something raw, something simple, to transform it and give it another purpose. Like. That's quite important. I mean, we talked about concrete, but it can be applied to any kind of materials in our work, and especially linked to the to the, the exi an existing situation. It's like how to to give um, uh, another sense to what exists that is related to what already exists. But then again, uh, another another situation would be what to give a, how to give another sense to to a material that is cheap, simple, and and the action of a worker um, on this material can just transform it completely. And that interests us. And what interests us also is the fact that the, effic the efficiency of it, I mean, the fact that a, a, a quite cheap thing can be transformed into a noble thing by the action of a worker. And, and I don't know if you figured out, I mean, you, you did, because uh, the, all the world video are just showing people we are working with all the all the workers and it's a good it's a tribute to them let's say because they are doing the the, the project more than us in a way uh, they are doing these actions we are talking about we are supervising them and we 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 are put we put all, all this action uh, on reality along with them it's not only us deciding that it's because we know that they know how to do that that we we decide with them to do it so it's yeah, it's quite important. The action itself is some time and most of the time more important than the material itself, for sure. Thank you. Maybe Charlotte, you already have questions from the audience. Thank you very much for starting those questions. Um, we are getting started with some questions from two of our bachelor students, Emily and Miriam. And I would like to encourage everybody who's watching to Sorry, first of all, I would like to encourage everybody who's not talking to turn off the microphone. <laughs> and then I would like to encourage everybody who's listening to this talk to uh, formulate some questions and send them either through the YouTube comments or to the UDK students to send them through the Telegram group. And then we will forward them and ask them. So Emily and Miriam, up to you now. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to ask you different questions while preparing. And we didn't know the content of the video yet, so there are a few questions we have that are more general, but we also have coincidentally some questions that are also about the subject of the like, construction process. but. First of all, we want to start off with a question about um, your office, which is based in Toulouse. We want to ask about the particularities of Toulouse and what um, effect of the re this region of France have on your architectural approach. Sorry, Louis, you need to turn the microphone back on because while somebody else is talking, it always gives a reverb or an echo. So sometimes I turn it off. Sorry okay. for that. Okay, okay, fine. So uh, yeah, working in Toulouse is um, interesting for several aspects that I will develop. Uh, first of all, um, it's a small city. Uh, it's a city where um, living, like the cost of living is not really expensive and that's a bit weird to say, but it allows young practice to, to just try, you know, it allows young practice of architecture to just start and do project and take time to, to develop their, 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 their office, let's say. Um, I mean, because I've witnessed uh, friends of mine in Paris or in other cities that are trying to launch uh, small offices, it's not, it's, it's less easier because it's the, the life is more expensive and, and it's different. So this is an important aspect, I think uh life is easy here let's say and it, it helps uh, it helps us to, to to develop our small activity then uh what is also interesting is that uh, there is a kind of huge uh, demographic growth 
So it, it has activity. Even if it's a small city, it has activity. And uh, I mean, there is a construction, there are, there are projects. We are not um, working on the mainstream construction uh, projects because we are a bit out of uh, the, the official networks, let's say. Uh, we developed our practice uh, on small scale projects, working with a private client. Um, and uh, let's say there are lots of that here. And, and because our practice developed uh, itself around this topic, uh, we, we, we just get all these small projects. Um, being a small city also is a, it can be also a problem relating to public uh, command, uh, public project. Because it's also subject to, uh, to, to let's say, mafia, <laughs> and it's an easy word to say, but because people know each other and everything, and we don't want to 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 get into into this kind of networks. We only want to to be selected because of what we do and not because of what we are, and that's quite important in our practice. It's just like we we want to to work, we want to build, we don't want to just shake hands and and be selected because we know people. So I mean, that's maybe. Um, an answer to your question about what is working in Toulouse, in, in a small city like Toulouse. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to go on with another question that is also like maybe also kind of related to the, uh, the place where you're working because uh, we were very interested uh, in how you start a project, like how, how's the kickoff, how much time uh, do you invest like getting to know the site and like for example for interviewing the users and stuff like that so uh, yeah how much time do you allow yourself for the research process um i would say that it evol it evaluates uh, through times uh, at the beginning it was like uh, we took more time to do project but then today we we reached uh, a point uh, where we, we have a kind of an expertise about uh, dealing with existing situations. So we have kind of, not, let's not say automatism because it's not a, the right word to our, that fits our practice. It's more like uh, methods, you know, like we apply methods to each project that allows us not to spend too much time uh, discussing and arguing. The method we apply is also uh, about working together because as you can see we are like four of us today and and working as a collective uh, in, in, uh, implies to to have methods uh, because to be able to share the work to be able to share the decisions you need to 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 put rules i mean to 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 find a way not to spend too much time discussing arguing so that's also an important aspect of our practice is uh, this collectiveness brought us to put methods and those methods brought us to kind of reach an efficiency that also allow us to work on small scale projects because you have to understand that small scale projects are not are not um, uh, how to say uh, rentable i don't know if you understand the word it, it doesn't i mean it's you take you, you spend time doing them so it needs to be ruled and to follow methods to become uh, rentable. And today we, we found these methods, it works quite well, and, and, and we don't spend much time uh, building projects today. It, it goes quite, quite quickly, quite fast, because of these methods. <laughs> right, thank you. So another question we had that also kind of fits in with the subject of um, construction or the construction process is that while well, recently we noticed that like there's a difference in how you present yourself on yourselves on your website, how you present yourselves on um, for example your Instagram or this video today, which was more about unfinished works and the transformation process and on your website it's more these polished and finished works and um obviously we that um you your um website and your instagram for example cater to different audiences that um are interested in um different things and yes we wanted to ask yourself why do you 
um, as individuals seek the value of your work in the um, building process and also the human interactions or rather in the finished pro pro product, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you might have noticed that the lecture and in most of the lecture we do are about construction processes. And as you said, the Instagram is about construction processes. I think um, our work is more interesting through this aspect than than the finished one. I mean, I mean, the, the point is that we 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 like to share all these processes as they talk about uh, as much as the finished one talk about our our practice. Um, as you noticed also, uh, and related to the previous question. According, uh, we, we have put it, we have decided methods uh, to, to communicate. Uh, the Instagram is about construction, the, the website is about finished project. It's also a way to, to, to share, to share all this, uh, to share all this task uh, through, the, through the office. I mean, we are following, each time we are posting uh, something, we are following a method that everyone can just uh, do. Uh, and that's, that interests us because uh, if tomorrow we are, uh, just getting someone new in the office, you could just do the post as you do it because there is a method. And and uh, and the Instagram question is like interesting because Instagram for us is a day-to-day -day, uh, posting, and our day-to-day -day is construction, and the website is about uh, finished project. Our day-to-day -day is not about finished product. Our daily work is being on 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 site, uh, being with workers. Uh, be, being with them, making decisions, that's that. Our approach is more about construction than, than finished project. Okay, thank you very much. There are a lot of questions from our guests. Um, I will start with the first one. It reads, if labor is more expensive, okay, sorry, I'm gonna turn the microphone off again. <clears throat> if labor is more expensive than material itself and affordability being such a vital part of your work, how do you keep budgets low? Does the process of involvement of workers save planning costs? You need to turn your microphone on again. I think the idea is, I mean, and it's it's not so easy to to explain, but the idea is not to to be cheap for being cheap. You know, it's about finding ways to spend money where we consider like uh, the the values the value is, and for sure, what we consider is that the value is more into uh, the end of a worker than than putting money in a in a fine uh, material. You know, and that's related to what Enrique said at the beginning. It's like we we value more the action than the material itself. For us, it's more important that that a worker um, spend time treating a standard concrete than uh, than buying a, a, an expensive concrete at the beginning, because we 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 are interested in that. We are interested in these actions, and and so the answer is that. We prefer to value uh, handwork than than expensive materials, for sure. And it seems that everybody is interested in your methodology and keeping costs low. Um, the next question is, what are the methods you are talking about for not spending too much time on construction? Um, so it's like, uh, OK. But easy to explain and to develop. Uh, on site, I mean, we have like standards methods that 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 says uh, one. We go on site one time a week. We don't spend too much time on the work site. We we just uh, focus on the, on the important task. We we focus every time on on what is problematic. Uh, every week we do a, a report, of course, uh, of the of the construction site. I mean, that's that's just methods of uh, internal methods that are not 
I mean, that could be interesting. You could ask to our intern that is here and he is witness, witnessing that. And it's also about uh, how to make decisions, uh, how to not to argue and to find uh, uh, rational um, uh, issues to take decisions on site and to, to be in face of a client uh, and to say, to tell him like, that's why we decide that and to be convincing, not through, um, not through taste or, or, or not, not through just choice, but more about, uh, more truth through, through pragmatical elements like financial, uh, uh, technical, and, and that's, that's the method we try to apply. Another one is also to be always two, two partners on site. It, it, it's not so efficient, but it's also a way to be convincing. Each time we, we are facing a problem, it's like we're discussing, we are together, it's again a collective decision that we take. So it, it, we need to be two at each time. I mean, there are many other methods, but these are few of them that, that we, we try to, 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 to follow each time we go on site and, and uh, the construction site. Thank you. And then another question by Leonard is, I understand your approach is about the process. Discoveries on the way and developing projects closely with craftsmen. Do you introduce your approach to the client when starting a project? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course we, we do. And it's quite important for, for us to, to make them understand, for example, that according to each project, of course, it's often different, but most of the time we explain them that they, if they come to us is because they are just uh, asking us to apply our method on their project. And so we, ex we explain our methods. And one of these methods is about working often with the same craftsmen, workers, because uh, it's a relationship we, we, we develop through time. And there are knowledge uh, that we develop together, and, and that's something really, really valuable uh, for architects, I think. So, ex for example, when we start a project, we always explain that um, we are going to work uh, with this mason because we've been working with him for a long time and he knows what we want. He knows how to treat with the finishes we we like to and, and stuff like that, you know. So, yeah, we explain the methods at the beginning and we explain the way we work. And sometimes it can be problematic for them. So we just say like, okay, so maybe you, you, you don't want to work with us because that's the way we developed our work and that's the way we developed our methods. So we're asking you to, to fit in them because that's the way we know how to do things. So we try to be pedag pedagogical. It's not easy all the time, but yeah, we, we do that. And there's another question related to this. I'm going to try to read it in French because probably you can translate it much better than I can to give the right answer. Um, quelles sont ces méthodes que vous évoquez? Comment communiquez-vous avec vos clients? Avec quel document et à quelle étape du projet? So it's a bit related to the previous question. Is about uh, uh, the question is about how to how do you apply the method with clients? Maybe there is some there is something more in this one that is about uh, the documents uh, that we use to to communicate with clients. Uh, again, uh, all the documents uh, we try to develop are following a method. Um, it's it always starts with a feasibility project that follows uh, graphic rules that we established all together uh, using uh, representation methods that we considered uh, the more efficient for a client to understand projects. It goes through plans, sections, and axonometrics. Uh, and then for the following phases, I mean, in the first feasibility um, phase, we, we developed most of the time three to four projects and they choose one of them and then we we just do a contract on the base of this project chosen and that's an important thing in our in our practice because as an architect it's quite important to to, to agree on a project to work on because it's uh, if you don't it's an open door to to just change everything all the time so we do that we just draw one project at the beginning i mean a main idea and we say like 
contractually we have to follow this id and if we don't i mean we we allow ourselves not to not to follow you anymore this is one of the method again <laughs> And then there's another question by Lamika. It reads, what are your thoughts on sustainability and using sustainable materials rather than concrete? Uh, our thoughts about sustainability is um, being rational and efficient in our construction processes. We don't, um, we are, we don't have the, the expertise of using uh, ecological materials or devices but what we try to do is to 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 reach an economy of means more than um, more than uh, uh, an ecological gesture uh, we, we we don't put we don't try to put too much all the time we, we face a project we, we we try to put as less as possible that's already for us being architects that don't have much knowledge about ecological devices it's a, already a kind of a movement towards uh, ecology being economic it's a bit different for sure but that's the way we 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 understand uh, sustainability is is not to over to overload the project of intentions but more focus on one intention and and one action that by its by its uh, by essence just go to the minimum and being minimum is a sustainable is a sustainable gesture for us i don't know if it's satisfying but <laughs> and if you say that you know little about um ecology do you think this should be part of future studies of architecture for all of us students who are in this chat and in this lecture ecology I mean, ecology can. I mean, it, it. It's also it also bring a lot of lot of things. I mean, is are you ecologic through the materials you used? Are you ecologic uh, through the way you live? I mean, it's it's a it's a difficult question because uh, most of the time ecology uh, is asked by is asked by client because they want to be uh, ecological. So. I mean, it's, 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 it's not, yes, we, we could learn how to build ecologically or all, how to conceive ecologically, but then uh, if you just do that and your life is not following an, an ecological uh, um, way of living, it doesn't make sense. I mean, that's, that's the problem for us with ecology is that you have to, to, to spread it all over. If you want to be, to be honest with yourself, you have to, to, to do it in every scale of, of your daily life. And, and some of us can and some other cannot because of uh, cultural matters and, and financial matters and all these things. So I don't know. Yeah, we, we could. Of course, it's important to, to teach ecology. But then it has to be in a, I think, for, in, a, in a kind of rational way or pragmatic way, let's say. Yeah. And then somebody would like a book about your methods which is linked to the next question by joao who reads um so basically you have a methodology that allows your office to speed the process in order to make those small projects profitable right yeah yeah that i mean that's a, a question <laughs> uh, maybe the question already answers it but it's probably um, aimed at your methods yeah, yeah, it's it's just, I mean, it's not, it's about being efficient, and it's I, I think it's about uh, it's a it's a world way of thinking that that brought us to this efficiency, being efficient, seeking for efficiency in project brought us to be efficient in the way we do them, and that's quite interesting. It's uh it's the way that uh, what we want to do become the way we do things. And for instance, it works so. It's quite, yeah, satisfying for us. And it, uh, what is interesting is that it, it allows us to, to live <laughs> and it allows us to, to have pleasure doing what we do. And that's, I mean, that's something we haven't talked about and we don't talk much about, but it's quite important in, in our daily, daily work is to just not to get bored, you know, it's just to have fun in, in do, by doing architecture, just to, to go to the office and just enjoying what we do and, 
And that's why also we face every every opportunity to treat it as a project. That's why we've done this video today because we we like to to experiment. We like to 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 go over a bit every day to go to get over what we do all the time. <laughs> I think that's the perfect answer to lead to the next question, which is: Are you trying to include yourself in the active building process as well? Uh, we do. We do uh, because um, for for many for many reasons. Uh, one is that uh, we are under a society of rules and of of of, of being scared of of, of the, the the results of things we are doing. So there are many things in construction that workers don't want to do because of that. I think it's, we think it's a shame. Uh, so for a few matters, we just put the, the hand on, in the mud because we want to achieve uh, the, the intention that is a good one for us. But because workers don't want to do them, we just do them. For example, like networks, we we, we go on site and we cable the, 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 the switches or or sometimes we, we I don't know, we, we do things, yeah. We do things, we go on site and, and we spend time doing stuff on site. <laughs> and then perhaps another question to your team. Timo asks, how did you find together as a collective and which parameters were important for the foundation? Um, to answer this question, I think we can come go back to the to the, the acronym of, of the of the office, BAST, Bureau Architecture Sans Titre was the, 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 the foundation idea of not being, uh, not being, let's say, individuals. Uh, and that's what Enrique said at the beginning. Like, I, 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 I just before starting, I, I told, like, it's not important that to say that I'm Louis Léger because it's past that that is more important, is the, the, the collective uh, as, as a collective, as, as an entity, as, as, as a group of people able to to do what we do. Uh, I would be alone, I wouldn't do what we do, for sure. Uh, so yeah, collectiveness is, is one of the keys of, of, our, of our practice, for sure. And it's also um, at the beginning, and, and we evaluated a lot. Uh, I wasn't there at the beginning. I joined like uh, two years after the foundation. And before that, there was another partner that left because he wanted to do something else. And then two other guys uh, came and then they left again. So we found ourselves today as three. But you imagine like for five years of existence of dust, we've been through different like geometry of, of, of team. So, I mean, maybe tomorrow I won't be there anymore. So it's not important to, to, to see my face. <laughs> It's important to hear your answers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then George asks, oh, sorry, I think that's your microphone. Um, George asks, in working with old buildings, do you find it difficult sometimes to have a balance between the existing building and the new architecture that you bring to it? Um, we're not looking for a balance between them. Uh, we just uh, try to find uh, the rational input that intervention can have on an existing situation. So it gives what it gives. Uh, we're not looking for uh, like a result, you know? We're looking for a process to achieve it. That's more important to us. I don't know if it's, an, if it's clear enough as, a, as an answer, but we don't, we're not, it's not about the result it's about the way to, to achieve it so so and then the result is there and and we look at it like the result of the the process so and the process interests us yeah that makes sense and then there is a question by nick a lot of your spaces are open flexible and undefined purpose-wise is this part of your methodology um the point again is that the 
<laughs> pictures of finished project are always empty just because when we take pictures people haven't moved in but they are not so flexible i mean it depends on project of course but then uh, they have purpose the, the, the spaces we are doing are, are often have purpose not all the time but then uh, flexibility itself is not something we are looking for especially as a space we developed in the lecture uh, another kind of flexibility the one that can be achieved through devices uh, kinetics things things moving that's interest us more but then uh, the interesting thing about uh, i mean flexibility i don't know if it's the right word but maybe more neutrality is that the the, the space we are just giving the architecture we're doing as a kind of neutrality and this neutrality is not obvious because it's kind of most of the time full of materials and it's like structural stuff. but this is for us a kind of neutrality uh, being raw rough the, stru the structure and being that makes tense the building can be a neutrality so it can be some kind of it can bring the idea of flexibility too So people are very interested in your work. There are at least three more questions, if you're still up for them. Mm -hmm. um, Zanda asks, you said you preferred small projects with private clients. If I go through the unbuilt section of your website, I see a lot of big buildings. How would your work, how would your work be different for these big buildings? And another question is about the sort of translating your methods into larger projects. So I think it's in the same direction. Um, <clears throat> so I would say that we haven't, we didn't have the opportunity yet to to build a big project. Mm. For sure, we we faced like competition, we faced uh, different uh, kind of phases about bigger project. Uh, our approach, depending on project, was quite different. Um, the experimentation was. Uh, uh, focusing on on different things that than refurbishing a small house for sure, but then trying also to 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 get over some some let's say everyday uh, understood things of architecture like it it was about uh, prefabrication a lot it was about uh, uh, financial uh, balance uh, of traditional way of building and different way of buildings and finding a, a way to con convince uh, the, the, the clients to to go in the direction of because that's the problem of big project big project with a lot of money it's difficult to take a risk to experiment things that haven't been done for sure so that's uh, uh, let's say a skill that we, we we don't have for instance it's a skill we we we, we haven't we didn't have the possibility to experiment this skill, like to, to convince some some someone to, to go in that direction in bigger scale project. But that's not easy. And I think, I mean, we developed an expertise in small project and and of course we, we would like to, to face other scales, but it's not easy to to reach and achieve. And that's linked to another question about Toulouse is that we don't have much uh, space here as a small practice to reach this big project <laughs> and it's a big contradiction because as you said Enrique we, we got the Miss Van der Rohe award but in Toulouse it, it it doesn't have any value and that's really a shame you know we do more competition in Paris and in Belgium than in Toulouse but it, we feel really ashamed of that because we, we really would like to, to work for our city but there is no culture of architecture here, and, and Miss Van der Rohe, it doesn't mean anything for anyone in Toulouse. That's it's a bit sad. And then there's another question linked to the scale. Um, Capucine says, scale seems to be a limit regarding the process, uh, process or method you spoke about. Have you ever experienced a larger scale? Well, you probably just answered that, um, of construction. And how do you react to its constraints? So maybe the question is also a larger scale. What would it allow you to do? And how would you face those constraints? Uh, I mean, we can be, uh, we can just 
can only be a fantasy, for instance, because we, as you said, we haven't faced a bigger scale project. But uh, yeah, I talked a bit about that. Uh, I think it's all about uh, trying to systematize um, the way of building. We like the idea of of finding uh, uh, like one detail that solves everything. You know, it's a bit like what we try to do in in small smaller scale project, but that would be interesting to 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 put in a bigger bigger scale and that could make sense for us to to to, to try to work on prefabrication uh, rational rationalization of processes stuff like that that would be that would be an, something that interests us again so i would like to um invite the audience to ask last questions if there are any other questions in the room otherwise i myself have one <laughs> which is also about what you just said about Toulouse. If you find that it's a place um, where there are no competitions happening or where there is not a lot of culture of architecture, what you just said, do you see yourself in a role that you could promote and a value for architecture? Or are there any events or talks or something that you're trying to do in order to bring more culture of architecture to Toulouse? Uh, we did, <laughs> but we stopped <laughs> because it was a big... Uh, was a lot of energy and we prefer to spend uh, to spend energy in uh, in the practice because it became uh, kind of more more and more efficient and we had a lot more and more work but yes we did we we we, we were in the maison d'architecture which is like the the local uh, let's say house of architecture which is a little a really small uh, cultural uh, center uh, uh, the aim is to promote uh, the, the culture of architecture and at the time we, we invited uh, uh, architects from all around Europe to, 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 do, to do lectures but then uh, you can imagine that one day we invited uh, Oliver Lutens and, 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 and Tan Manaban and we, they arrived in Toulouse for the lecture and there were like four people in the room we, like, we were like just what's going on like it's like even this the architecture school doesn't push students to go to to the to this lecture it's like so it's just it's just i mean i don't know <laughs> it's a bit uh, it was a bit uh, energy uh, and also a bit of shame for people who invited not to be um, not to have people listening at them so yeah i mean that's something that doesn't really exist in toulouse and and that's it. I mean, and that's why we are looking, we are communicating, trying to to, to break the, the 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 borders and just to go over that and, and to 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 be more in this kind of event than than the one in Toulouse because for us it's more interesting, and we we, we feel that people are more in, interested abroad and in other places than in Toulouse, so that, that's fine to us. <laughs> Okay, so there are two last questions. Um, Bruno writes, do your plans, concepts ever completely change based on elements you discover within the already existing buildings or structures you work with during the building process? Sorry, sorry can you repeat again? I didn't hear the... Yes. So the question is about finding elements in old houses or buildings that you refurbish and whether your plans or concepts ever completely change based on elements that you find along the way? Uh, complete, no, no, not completely, but they adapt for sure. And even I would say that, uh, 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 let's say a, a normal architect would do, uh, uh, let's, how we call it, a tender, tender, tender call before starting a project by drawing all the details and, and being sure that the, the, the company or the, the workers are doing properly what they wanted to do. We don't do that. We just like the tender call is the, the drawings are really kind of nebulous, you know, they are like more ideas. And then when we are on site, we precise things. And, and that's the adaptation we, we do. Uh, we don't go too much in detail through the study phases, but the details uh, are embodied in the construction phase. So it adapts. It, we don't change the whole project because we discovered something, but we adapt it, and it often works. And then there are two questions related um, 
to your references, what architects do you look up to or which references do you frequently use? Uh, we, 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 look, we look at everything, let's say. We, we just like uh, really uh, trying to be up to date to what is done uh, today, what has been done in the past. We, just, we don't have specific reference. We always uh, look for for specific uh, process and uh, not process but construction details in every architect arch architecture that i'm done without uh, without being judgmental about everything has been done it's just we are going to to look for a detail to to find it finding find the detail interesting but not uh, the whole production of the architect is is that's the way we we deal with reference and then also we have this uh, this really strong um, uh, curiosity about vernacular uh, architecture again about details about the way things are built uh, not as a world but as a as principle of construction that we take and we can we can look at them and that gives us ideas to, to develop things in, in our way and then there's a last question, perhaps also in this direction, by Kama. How much do you see yourself as part of a French movement with Luther, La Caton Vassal, Studio Muto, for instance, that some call new realism? Uh, um, I mean, that's, let's say, satisfying because all these architects are architects we really appreciate and we really like what they do. But then again, we, we don't want to, to put a name in what we do because, I mean, ourselves, if people say say it, it's fine to us. And then, but we are not able to, to call ourselves anything. I think we are just, let's say we are just doing what we do and then people who are able to, to theorize uh, what we do can can do it and just can bring relation to, to, to all these other practices. But then for sure, we look at what they do. As, as I told you, we look at the way they build things and the details and everything. And, but then we, I mean, it's fine to us to be that there is a, an, a rap, rapprochement between us and them. But this this is not something we are looking for. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. And then a last comment um, that building something offbeat wrote on YouTube is keep your scale. We love it. <laughs> So maybe I'm going to pass the microphone to Professor Sobejano to conclude the talk. Um, thank you very much, Louis, and thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you very much, Charlotte, for this, uh, as always, great uh, work that is not easy of really uh, transmitting not the questions and the ideas of the, of the audience. And thank you really very much, uh, Louis, for the presentation. I think you uh, you have been coherent uh, in your uh, first statement uh, from the beginning till the end. I mean, this uh, sort of even naked expression of, of a project without narratives or metaphors going to the point that interests you with this sort of even physical relation to construction, you know, that we all wonder and look forward to see when it breaks the scale, because you said you are uh, you are not in the official scene, maybe not in Toulouse because nobody is a prophet in his own land, but you are definitely, uh, the reason is that you're here. So, uh, and this is going to really uh, be an expression of your own presentation. You said at the beginning, and I think to me it's a key question, that this lecture was a new project. I mean, project number 19, I guess, no? So thank you very much to for giving us the opportunity of sharing in direct uh, presence, even though online, this uh, project. I'm looking forward to, to visit your products, uh, your, your works in the future. Thank you. To all of you, to all the team, yeah. Can't hear you. Thank you again for the opportunity to 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 develop this kind of uh, discussion. We we really appreciate it, and uh, I mean we are happy that the lecture wasn't too long and the question was a bit longer because we we like we like to face this kind of question, and we think that that sometimes is more interesting to to answer people. Uh, question more than just develop our thoughts and that's that's really satisfying for us
Thank you. And actually, maybe after this lecture, we are going to change our format and we are going to give more space to the, to the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.